saltwaterfishing247.com. Helping you catch that fish of a lifetime. Good morning. My name is Captain Blaine Anderson. This morning we're going to talk about using Yum's 9-inch Houdini Shad for striped bass and maybe later a little bit of northern pike. This is one of my favorite lures out of all of them for the stripers. It's got a unique action to it where we get a lot of, uh, a lot of darting side to side, up and down. It's, uh, the difficulty in doing this is that it has to be rigged exactly correct to get the action out of it. It's easy to do, but it does have to be rigged correctly, and we're going to show you how right now. Every package comes with its own hook. This is a 9-0 stainless steel hook made by Excalibur. You can buy them separately, or they just come in the pack, one each. I've already got my hook tied on here. It's easier to tie your hook on first before rigging the bait. I take my bait, I hold it upside down. There's a slit in the belly right here. I like to hold it facing up. The trick is to keep this hook in the middle of the bait the entire time that you're rigging. We start right in the middle at the tip, and if you notice here, this bait has a little eyeball on it on both sides. I'll push the point of the hook down right until about the eyeball, and then we bring it out through the bottom of the bait, like so, still keeping it right in the middle of the bait. Continue to feed the hook through. When we get to the bend of the hook in here, I'm pulling it inside the bait, and then I take the hook and I turn it upside down, completely upside down, so it's like this. We have to find out where this part of the hook is going to stick back out through the bait, and you notice here on the side of the bait there's ribs running down the side. If we come out by the eyeball here, 99% of the time this hook is going to be right about where that last rib is there. So we'll bend it over, kind of put my finger here as a guide where I want the point of the hook to come back out. Bend the bait over and go straight up again through the middle of the bait until you feel the hook poking your finger. Slide your finger over and just push it the rest of the way through. That's it. Very simple. But the key here is that your bait is completely straight up and down. The, the beauty of this bait is the way that it darts side to side, up and down. It really imitates an injured or scared bait fish. A lot of guys make the mistake sometimes of, of rigging it incorrectly and we get a bend or a bow in the bait and all that does is cause it to spiral in the water instead of that darting side to side. That's what's going to trigger the strikes. Okay, so we're rigged up, but there's a couple of other important things to consider here to make this lure work at its optimum. Uh, I use a seven foot medium heavy action rod. Uh, we need something that's got quite a bit of backbone to it because some of these fish out here, honestly, we're catching them in the upper 30 to low 40 inch range on artificials. We really need to be able to drive that hook home. I like something that's got the backbone to be able to steer this fish once we get it up near the boat. We're on shallow water flats right now. We could be fishing in as little as two feet of water, so sometimes we really got to put some backbone to them, turn them away from rock piles or, or logs that we know are out here. Uh, having a stiff rod with a somewhat soft tip uh, combined with braided line, uh, snapping that rod tip back really gets that darting action. A lot of guys make the mistake all the time of casting out and during their retrieve they're not using their wrist enough. It's more of a, a sweep with the rod tip rather than snapping, snapping, snapping. With braided line, because it has no stretch and a stiff rod, everything you do is instantly transmitted to that bait. So with a line that doesn't stretch, we can really get that lure darting side to side. It does make a big difference. If you have a rod that's too soft, you're not going to be able to really get that quick darting action, which is imperative. Uh, aside from braided line, we use fluorocarbon leaders out here. The water this time of year can be very clear, and we found that some days they are a little bit line shy. So a fluorocarbon leader, usually three to four feet in length. As I'm changing lures throughout the day sometimes, because I do tie direct, the leader gets shorter and shorter. If I get any less than this right here, I'm just going to cut that leader off, tie a new one on, and get back to fishing. But fluorocarbon is a must, especially in the clear water. Okay, so we've gone over the rigging. I want to talk a little bit about the importance of the retrieve and how we get it to dart side to side, because that is the key with this Houdini Shad here. When you make a cast, 
long or short. Give that bait a couple of seconds to settle down into the water. And with a tight line, I kind of reel towards the lure and it's a snap with the wrist. A lot of guys make the mistake of more of a sweep with the rod. That's just not going to cut it. It's just kind of glides through the water with no action at all. With a tight line and a snap and retrieving to keep that slack out of the line the whole time, this thing will really dance. Some mornings they want a very fast cadence to it. Other mornings it's slow. Doesn't matter how fast or slow as long as you're snapping it and getting that darting action out of it. It's up to us every morning we go out to figure out what kind of cadence that they really want. But with a tight line and snaps of the rods, it's not going to be long before you find some fish. Yum's 9-inch Houdini Shad. As I said, it's one of my favorite for pike, stripers, tarpon, any of the big game fish. Practice rigging it, practice the cadence, get it zigzagging. You can't go wrong, I guarantee you're going to catch more and bigger fish with this lure. saltwaterfishing247.com, helping you catch that fish of a lifetime.